does not ring a bell, especially when we talk about the telecommunications sector in the country. If it does, then you would speak about the failed Airtel, Telco merger. Do you remember the CEO, Mugo Kibati, during that failure? He said, is the dominant player. In quotes, Safari, come and I will tell you why I'm starting with quotes this morning. Stifling competition in the country. That might just be a direct quote, if I remember that bite correctly. If I don't, then I'm 100% right about it. Now, there's no dominant player though in the telecommunications sector in the country. Because as far as we are concerned, the regulators have to come out and declare that a single player now is a dominant player. So hold on. So after we failed, or after that merger that was started to be among the biggest ones in the country, that is the Airtel Telco merger, Mugo Kibati said, but done and dusted with that, it didn't work out, we are forging our way forward. We win that conversation here on a business end. I personally spoke to him, he said, that's no longer a conversation and we don't want to look back into that. But when companies come up again and they are challenging that status quo by Safaricom. What company is this? Airtel. So Airtel again has come up and said that indeed they feel like Safaricom is stifling competition in the country now. Now, if you look at exactly what the Standing Senate Committee was told that Airtel is accusing rival network Safaricom for stifling competition. But then Safaricom came in and said, we don't get it. We don't get it. Because as far as we are concerned, competition is healthy in the economy. We are basically running our business. This conversation about how we're stifling competition is neither here nor there. But hold on again, because then you would like to think that the regulators will come in and then say, well, let's go in and give you a status report and also confirm these allegations that Airtel is throwing at Safaricom. And I'm not talking about the blue and green, uh, sorry, the, the red and green competition that we saw at a rush at Safaricom. No, it's a direct one in terms of market share. Now, Airtel is saying, I mean, if you have 50 plus percent market share in this space, then you should be declared a dominant player. The regulators come in, and that is CA, and they say, mm, we think competition remains healthy despite the market share by Safaricom. And indeed, according to CA, the market share for Safaricom has been dropping regardless on exactly where it is now. So according to them, you can call that player a dominant player. Instead, they told the Senate committee that competition is healthy. As far as we are concerned, Safaricom is not a dominant player. Ha, huh. okay, that's fine. All right, let's go back and look at exactly where Safaricom is coming back from in terms of their performance. And we're going to back to the financial year ended 2020. And we're looking at this because we do know the majority of the companies in the country were struggling with the grips of the coronavirus pandemic. And Richie, we could point out that data. Indeed, thank you very much. You will see that according to this one here, then you will see exactly where Safaricom 
closing. Yes, indeed, the coronavirus pandemic really did affect their performance in a 2020. But if you look at the free cash flow they had at the close of 2020, we see that this is a company that was really doing well within the coronavirus pandemic. 70 million shillings to be specific. That's the cash that Safaricom had without really having a specific area to put it into. Let's go to the next indicator that is going to be a proper pointer on exactly how Safaricom has been rising in terms of that revenue. And you will see here, in terms of total revenue, they recovered heavily. If you look at that service revenue where they were in... Um, 2020 vis-a-vis -vis 2021 then you will see indeed that even before we close uh 2021 you will see that across the board these indicators in terms of surface revenue and total revenue are really going to eclipse what safaricom did make in financial year 2020. now if you are in kenya then you would know that majority of the news I've been getting from the education sector in the country is that there have been a bit of unrest in the secondary schools in the country. In fact, starting from the latest one where we had a, a fire case at a Buru Buru a Girls High School. Was it that? Yes, it was Buru Buru Girls High School. And we've seen a couple of schools also um, face arsona cases. So educators in the country uh, came in and said, well, this unrest could be as a result of the third term that is actually running all the way to 23rd of December. Wow. That's really us trying to catch up with the disruptions that we went into um, in a 2020 where we saw majority of the schools closed. Now, what they've done, they've gone back on that, and the Ministry of Education is released a presser saying that they have term for this current um, term is going to start on 19th and end on a 23rd November. Three days. Three days. Could be two if you're learning very far and you have to wait a day for you to go back home and then come back. Could be one. In some cases if you lack fare and you have to wait for your parents to send you fare. So now so you go back to school again. Could be nothing if you lack that fare then. So just two days. And then they're back again, all the way up to 23rd. Do you think that that would stop the kind of unrest that uh, we have seen in the education sector, especially in the secondary schools in the country? Talk to us at Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. Again, that, that means that the parents again have to look for fare and pocket money and go back again after four days. Just four days. Okay. Now, lastly, IABC has missed its target of 4.9 million new voters that it looks to register. Look at that now. Out of that 4.5 million, they've just got a paltry 840,000 462. Now, a court order uh, came from um, a high court in Alderet saying that IABC was supposed to extend uh, this registration exercise. But then IABC said, no, we're not going to do that because then we have no budget for that completely. So out of the 4.5 million we were targeting and we've seen a cross-section of leaders who are calling for this mass, mass registration exercise to be extended. Well, it's not going to be extended. Now, what we do know, IEBC is rushed back to the National Treasury and the National House so that they could look for money to register an additional 3.7 million in the next one month again. But remember, they're only targeting the youth, probably within the age of 18 and 24. And these are the people who didn't come out to register. Those messages, those messages we've seen, it's like... It, they, it didn't make sense to them. Could that, could that be the interpretation? <laughs> Again, talk to us here at Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. Have the youth failed to recognize the importance of voting? That's how we start. Let's cross over to the newsroom this morning. <laughs>